Hi everyone, this is an introduction to uh, the using Jupyter Notebooks and Binder, which are two of the tools that we're gonna be relying on a lot for um, our analysis during the class over the next couple of weeks. So I'm going to end my video there and start sharing my screen. All right. Now, there's a couple of different ways that you can access the notebooks that we'll be using. One is from the course OSF. And so here, I'm going to navigate to day one. And then I'm going to click on read more to expand the wiki. And then I'm going to click on the launch binder icon. And that will start launching the binder. The other way you can do it is from this course website. Uh, if you access the Jupyter Notebooks and Binder uh, sec uh, section here in the drop down menu, uh, you can launch the binder from here, and that will do precisely the same thing. Also, if you wanted to read offline the contents of the Binder Notebook, uh, the Jupyter Notebook that we'll be using, uh, it's here on this website. So, jump back over here. And it looks like the Jupyter Notebook has launched. So let's talk a little bit about what just happened. Um, Binder is an open source uh, tool uh, developed uh, by an open community. And the idea is to uh, create shareable, interactive, reproducible environments that can be shared and used by many remote users. Um, so really, it's a way to launch a live um, uh, software environment, including your data, your code, any notes or documentation, all in one session in the browser without having to download any software or um, download any data sets. Everything is wrapped up into a single browser session. And this allows you to uh, so in terms of reproducibility of research, it would allow someone to look through the data, look through the code. So you could take a data from its raw state, uh, you know, just after being collected, say, in a, a, by, in a, by a tool or a um, survey, all the way through being processed and cleaned, analyzed, visualized, and, and possibly even uh, documented without having to download anything. So um, then when you're done with it, the instance is immediately killed off and you move on. So, so that's the idea is, is it's an ephemeral browser-based session that allows people to interact with software and code without having to download it themselves. And the reason that we're using it for this class is because um, it, uh, it, it can be difficult to install R and in RStudio. Um, uh, so this way, we're able to launch it in the browser and, and um, without having to troubleshoot any download issues. So um, we're in a Jupyter Notebook right now, but you can also use Binder to create RStudio um, sessions or Python sessions. Uh, and there's a lot more um, that you can do with it. So details about that are here in this paragraph. Now let's talk a little bit about uh, Jupyter Notebooks. So um, Project Jupyter is also nonprofit open source um, and uh, it too evolved to support interactive data science and scientific computing. So um, the way that uh, Jupyter Notebook works is uh, it a lot, it's, it's also kind of a single environment that allows users to create um, live interactive code that can be executed immediately on the fly uh, to generate plots or data transformations or to create data. Um, but along with that, there's, as you can see, this text that describes step-by-step -step what's going on. And so this too promotes reproducibility in that you can explain exactly what you did step by step and then allow people to execute uh, commands in programming language themselves and see the results in the output. So um, notebook documents contain both the inputs and the outputs in the narrative text. 
Uh, notebook, Jupyter Notebook files have a .ipynb extension. Uh, so it's short for IPython notebook, but um, as you can see here, we're interacting with R in this Jupyter Notebook. So um, underlying each Jupyter Notebook is what's called a kernel. And uh, this is a program that runs the code in the background. Um, so each notebook has a single kernel. Um, and what happens when you start a notebook up is the application launches a kernel um, that runs the code for this notebook. So as you can see, we're running R. Um, it's also possible to switch the kernel to whatever other um, uh, languages you have installed. Okay, so here you could potentially shift it to Python. I'm not going to do that. But there's, so there's a number of other alternatives available for Jupyter Notebooks, um, including Python, C++, SQL, and many more. Um, and uh, you can try some of those out if you click on this link um, without having to download extra software. Okay, so again, to, to reiterate, we're using Binder to host to this Jupyter Notebook in the cloud so that we can run the R code in the Jupyter Notebook. <laughs> That's a lot of jargon and possibly a lot to take in. But the main takeaway is we're able to execute R in the browser without having to download R. And also you're gonna be able throughout this class to execute chunks of code that I've already written. And that's gonna simplify things a lot because um, as I mentioned in the intro to the course, this is not a session on using R. I mean, how to use R. Um, there's no way I can teach how to use R uh, just in the short time that we have today. So it's really important to be able to um, run code that's, that I've already written that you can then kind of play around with and adapt for your own purposes. Okay, so this interface here, uh, the title of the notebook is here. The uh, kernel running the code is right here. Um, uh, you are, um, you see this menu bar here, um, and this will allow you to do a number of things, okay? Um, something to point out about this is because it's a binder session and binder sessions are ephemeral, any changes that you make to this document uh, are not going to be saved. So as soon as you close out your session, it's any changes that you made, if you typed in your own code uh, or your own notes to yourself are not going to, are going to vanish. So the next time that you start up the, um, the notebook for this page, it's going to look exactly as it does right now. So if you want to save it to your own computer, any changes you make, you're gonna to have to go here into download as and select IPYNB file. And then if you ever wanna open that file, you're gonna to need to install some software and the instructions for that are at the bottom of this document. Um, so the other option, if you wanna save changes that you've made is to use these two um, cloud upload and cloud download buttons. And what these do is save the changes in your browser environment. Okay, so you can make changes and then you can click on this cloud down arrow and that will save this change, uh, save that change. And then the next time that you load the notebook, and it's gonna look exactly as it did when I gave it to you. Then you click this cloud with the up arrow and that restores the version of the code that you um, made changes to. So that'll only work if you don't clear your cookies and cache uh, because as soon as you do, that, um, that, that change will, will be deleted. Uh, but that's something to keep in mind that um, really the purpose of this is to use it as a teaching tool um, and then if you want to make your own changes, you'll need to take the next step by downloading some of your own software. Um, so the, that's pretty much it for this, um, this menu. You know, you can create new notebooks, you can make a copy of this notebook, but again, it's ephemeral. It's not going to be saved permanently. 
Um, and if it would help you, you can also print, um, print this out on, on paper, but I would really more recommend if you need to reference it outside of the notebook environment to jump over into the course website and look at the contents here. Every um, notebook that we're gonna be using has an analog uh, and a static version on the web. Okay, um, the other things I wanna point out um, are uh, this kernel, uh, which we've already clicked on. So uh, if you are inactive for more than 10 minutes, then uh, it shut, the binder will shut down. So what you want to, but that doesn't happen if you stay on this website, I mean on this web page. So if you're gonna take a break, I do recommend going ahead and downloading the cloud and saving the, the state if you've made any changes that you wanna save. Um, and that includes running previous code chunks. Those will also be saved. Um, but you, um, but if you stay on this window, then uh, it'll stay active. Okay, so leave it on this window before you take a break. Uh, and I'll reiterate this during class. If it does become disconnected, you can try to reconnect. Although that probably um, won't work. So you're gonna have to restart the kernel. And that means that any code that you've executed previously is not going to be saved. So you'll have to go scroll back up and um, rerun those code, chunks of code. Okay, um, let's get into the structure of a Jupyter Notebook document. Um, right now we are uh, reading a um, markdown uh, text narrative. If I double click inside of this, you will see that it turns into Markdown. If you're not familiar with Markdown, it's basically a language created, plain text language created for drafting uh, text documents. I'm not gonna go too much into learning Markdown uh, because that's not really the purpose of this class. Um, and you're not really gonna need to edit any Markdown. I've already written the narrative portion. So, um, but this is what it looks like sort of under the hood is a uh, markdown. So one thing that happened when I double clicked inside this, uh, this notebook is I shifted into what is called uh, edit mode. Um, now, um, uh, so, and you can see the, the um, border change to blue when I did that. So when I'm in edit mode, any, any changes that I make, if I want them to take effect, I have to click on this run button. And you can see that it reverted back. So again, if I double click, and let's say I uh, add in a word here, edit, and then I click on run, you can see that word um, was made part of the document. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that and click run again. Okay, um, so that there's two different modes in Jupyter Notebooks. One is in command mode and one is in edit mode. Um, and, oops, I didn't mean to click on that link. Um, so that's, that's really something to uh, keep in mind as we're going throughout uh, is the different modes that exist in Jupyter Notebooks. So uh, the next thing that I wanna talk about is uh, code cells. Okay, so we've been looking at markdown cells, which is the narrative text. Code cells allow you to edit and write new code. So one indicator that I'm in a markdown cell is you see this, um, word markdown here. If we go down here and click on this cell, you'll see now it's in code. And what that means is that anything in here is in executable R code, all right? Uh, and that's, that's what you wanna pay attention to when you wanna write code, you wanna make sure that it's a code cell. Uh, so um, a few different um, uh, keyboard shortcuts to know is um, you enter into command mode. Uh, one way of doing it is to double click in the cell. The other way is to uh, press enter 
when after you have selected the cell. So you can see when I'm in the blue border, uh, I'm not editing it. So when I click in the in the on the um, left side and it's a blue border and I press enter, now I'm actually editing it. And I press escape to go back into command mode, enter to go into edit mode, control enter or run to run the code. So what did I do right there when I press control enter? Well, there's different ways aside from just clicking on run to run the, uh, the um, whatever cell you're in, whether it's a code or a markdown cell. So one of those is shift enter. And what that will do is it will execute the current block that you're in and it will select the next cell. So I'm gonna press shift enter here. That's taking longer than it should. So uh, what I'm gonna do is restart the kernel here. Not sure what happened. Let's try that again. Okay, that looks better. <clears throat> and that's gonna happen sometimes. That's just the nature of working in these kinds of interactive environments is not everything goes exactly the way that you think it's gonna go. So you just have to kind of roll with it and ask me on the Slack channel if you, if you get issues as you're going through this. Um, okay, so what happened here is print and then this string of text, you just ran the cell and selected the next cell. I'm gonna do that again, shift enter. Print is an, a function in R. So basically it just printed this character string and you can see it right here as an output um, and selected the next cell. Okay, so next what I want you to do is to click into the cell and press control enter. Now what you've done is you've ran the cell, but you've stayed within the current cell. So there's two different things. Shift enter selects this cell, control enter stays in the cell that you're in. Okay, and that's important um, if you're going to go ahead and make a few changes, like let's say... So, and press control enter. That's where it's useful if you're gonna go ahead and make any changes to it. And then the final little code cell is uh, alt enter. Um, or if you're on a Mac, you press option. And what that does is it runs the code block, but then it inserts a new cell right below it. And so if you wanted to, um, to write your next statement, job, and now I'm gonna press control enter, and then you can do that and it's already ready made for you. Or if you press option enter, it, enter, it creates a new code cell. So the other ways to create a new code cell is if you go up into insert, you can insert a cell above, or insert a cell below. All right, now let's say you wanna get rid of these cells, you don't need them. What you do is you wanna make sure you're not in edit mode. In other words, uh, you don't want the green border. You wanna make sure you're in command mode, which means you have the blue border, and then you just press the D key twice. I'm gonna do that again, and I'm gonna do that again. Okay, uh, there's a few other keyboard shortcuts listed up here. Um, B is uh, another shortcut to create a new cell below the current cell. So what that means is if I'm here and I don't wanna run this, uh, but I do wanna insert a new cell below, I press the B key and now I have a new cell below. I'm going to, so I'm in command mode. I have the blue uh, indicator, so I'm gonna press D twice and delete that. Uh, a creates a new cell above it. And then there are, are shortcuts to change markdown cells to code or code cells to markdown. So let's say I uh, create a new um, code block. Oops, you see what happened there? I was in edit mode, so when I press B, it just put the B key in the cell. Don't want that. So I wanna go back into command mode, now press B. And whenever any new cells are created, they're um, created in code uh, mode. 
So if I want that to be markdown, I'm gonna go into command mode and I'm gonna press M and that changes it into markdown. So press M to change. And then I am going to press control enter and that will render that bit of markdown into text and um, that's it. Don't really want to keep it. So well, before I delete it, let me enter into edit mode by pressing enter. And then what if I wanted this to turn into a um, code cell? Well, I'm going to go back into command mode by pressing escape. Then I'm going to press Y and that will turn it into code. Then I'm going to press enter. And then if I executed this, this is markdown. Um, and let me just do that. I'll press control enter. I'm going to get an error here. That's because this is not valid R code. Like, this is just text. Now I could change it into valid R code by saying print and putting this into quotation marks. Um, and now I'll press control enter. Now I printed that to the uh, console. So now it's functional and I don't get an error message. Okay, uh, I'm gonna delete that by clicking on the side and pressing D twice. And then um, there's no other um, shortcuts that I really wanna show you. You can undo um, actions at the command level. In other words, like deleting cells or inserting cells um, by going up to edit, undo, delete. Um, and then the other thing I want to show you is if you want to clear this output, you can go up to cell and you can either do it for the current cell that you're in. So you go to, to uh, current outputs, clear. Or if you want to clear all of the output, you'll go up to cell, all output, clear. Okay. Um, a couple of other things to point out um, with these code cells is you'll see this hash. Um, now what that is is called a comment in R. So remember, anything in here is would translate exactly if you were writing R um, in a normal R or R Studio environment. Okay, so in R, the hash uh, indicates a comment. So anything following the hash will not be evaluated as R code. And I'll use that throughout the notebooks as some, like some instructions. All right, so congratulations. If uh, this was your first time using Jupyter, not only uh, were you successfully, did you successfully use Jupyter notebooks, but if this is your first time using R, you successfully executed your first R code. Print is R, um, an R function. So we're going to go into more detail into the uh, into R into the next in the next lesson. Um, wrapping up, uh, I think the last portion is this is something to revisit after the course is over. Um, during the course, I'm not going to be providing active support for software downloads. Our focus is going to be on the tools that we're using for this session. But after the class, um, if you do want to trial this out on your own um, systems, there are two options. Uh, one is to download Anaconda, and that would be if you want to open up these Jupyter Notebook files, so these IPYMB files. Uh, you have to download Anaconda, and then there's a couple of different um, ways to install the kernel for running R in Anaconda. It, it comes with... Um, it doesn't come with R already installed. So you have to install R code and then you have to enable that R code to run in Anaconda. And then you can up, open up these Jupyter notebooks and it'll look pretty much just like you're, you see right now. Um, and then the second option is to download R and R Studio. Um, R St Studio does not run IPYNB files. So instead, what you'll want to do is to use the RMD files. And let me just jump over into the GitHub uh, repo that all of this is based. Um, 
all of the uh, notebooks and everything, the website and everything are all here. So if you want to install just one by one um, the IPYNB files or the R Markdown files, IPYNB is what you open in Anaconda, R Markdown is what you open in R. If you click on the file itself and then you right click on raw here, you can click on save link. But this language might be different depending on if you're in a different browser like Chrome. So I'm in Firefox right now. So if you save that link, then you can just save that file, the whole file directly to your computer and you can see that RMD extension. And the same thing uh, with these IPYMB files. You just right click on raw, save link as, and then you can download the files. All right, and that's it for our um, introduction to Binder and Jupyter Notebooks. Um, if you have any questions on that, let me know in the course Slack.